Hey everyone, this is Joe from Thunk Tank Podcast, and thank you so much for joining us here today on our latest episode all about Neil Stevenson's epic, epic book series, The Baroque Cycle, or what I sometimes refer to as historical fiction Game of Thrones. Now, I say that because while this series may lack some of the higher fantasy elements of dragons that we love so much, it still has some fantastical elements, as well as all of the deep woven plots and political intrigue that became so popularized with something like Game of Thrones. So if you haven't read this series, I would say definitely check it out. If you have, and that's why you're here, I think you're going to really enjoy our conversation about what makes this series so great and where it might go moving forward. I know Neil Stevenson himself has said that he would love for it to be made into a TV series, so maybe that's what's coming down the pipeline with it. We'll just have to wait and see. If you'd like to hear more of our content, you can check us out at thunktankpodcast.com. That's thunk, as always, with the U. And we have further extras on our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash thunktankpodcast. I hope you really enjoy this conversation between myself, Professor Labs, Johnny Genie, and Robo Kara, all of us being huge fans of this awesome book series. So thanks again, and we will see you in the Baroque tank <laughs> broke tank attention humans this is a thunk tank please insert this podcast directly into your nearest orifice for viewing pleasure okay you ready oh shit <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the thunk tank <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Welcome. To, come into our. Come into our Thunk Tank. <laughs> Luke, don't switch to the other peanuts. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Come in the tank. We're thinking, and we're thinking, <laughs> and we're thunked, and we're thunked. <laughs> oh my God, I'm probably more beer than man if we go far enough back at this point. You know, that's... Okay, so welcome, everybody. Uh, we <laughs> you got... missed nothing about the technocrats. We'll get there. We'll Trust get us. back to those <laughs> fuckers. Uh, so we got Pro F- Professor Labs here, Prof Labs Doc Labs, uh, joining us for yes. an intimate discussion about a particular book series we've all read and are big fans of. And, and, and if, it, you've, if you've clicked on this podcast... You, you must have read it. You must have, and if not, you should probably really stop listening now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> massive spoiler alerts. Yeah. But you should go uh, read it. The audio books are great. The written books are great. Yeah, Baroque Cycle by Neil Stevenson. I'd be able to hear. Yeah. Should have said this way before we started. Is your mic on? <laughs> Is my mic on? Like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. Oh, I think I can hear myself. Uh... I just actually, can't hear you actually, in my ear. That's weird. You're supposed to be able to hear do all I hear, of us. Do I hear me? Yeah, I hear me. It's just light. I hear you, too. You can yeah. hear us. It's I just, just the channels. Okay, I do only have one ear. I can hear you. That's probably why. We're in the other ear. Right. This is the best Baroque Cycle podcast episode ever. Yeah, so anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to... Thanks, thanks, Kara. That, we'll, we'll, we'll edit it in post. That's like an ongoing line in the podcast. Oh, I listen. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're not going to edit. Uh, <laughs> we haven't yet. So where so. do we start? Like, go get, give me your sub, subnos, subnopsis. <laughs> I'll give you my Johnny's put in synagogue. My Sibmaninus. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh so Baroque I mean so if you've read Baroque Cycle, clearly that's why you're listening. Uh if not, again, you should go read it because it's it's a really cool nexus of historical fiction and I, I, I don't know if you would call it sci fi or fantasy. He calls it sci fi, Neil Stevenson. I would call it sci fi because it it's fantastical sci-fi, or, or or like some of his other books, it's alternate reality. Alter- sci-fi. Yeah, I was gonna say alternate history, fantastical alternate history, something like that. Yeah, yeah. his book uh, Anathem. It's weird. Anathem. An- Anathem. Anathem yeah. is amazing. It's about these like monks that live in this like clock monastery mm-hmm. where the doors only open, like certain doors only open every year, ten years, hundred years, and like as you advance, you move in, but you never move out. Wait, that's a Stevenson and, book. Yeah, and they're like, nice. the, it's this like weird priesthood, and like a ship from another dimension's Earth shows up over the planet, and they have to like try to figure it out with their universe is science nice it's it, and so because that he's built worlds like this before i yeah. would call it fantastical sci-fi like uh or s- seven eves yeah 
Yeah, seven E's where the moon explodes. That's another great. one. Oh, that's books. a new one, right? Yeah, you should read it. Yeah, it's a few years old. That was now, good, but it was amazing. He spends like oh, cool. thirty pages explaining how to get in and out of a spacesuit and how spacesuits work because it's not See, glamorous that's and what, sci-fi at all. That's, that's brutal, what that's brutal sci-fi. He gets into it's yeah. so funny, too. brutally specific. Well, it's it's and so hard funny sci-fi. when you think about some of the best authors. That's what they do. They get into crazy specifics at a certain point. Right. George R. R. Martin does it with food, for oh, example. I was going <laughs> to call it Helm's Deeping. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tolkien okay. does it with Lance. Escapes. Tolkien does do it with landscape. Yeah, the, I mean, uh, do I need it? to hear about you know the hills the, around Bree for another? The, I was paragraph? gonna say the two towers. The first half of that book, it, it's just amazing. It's all countryside. Yeah, but it's Great. amazing. Oh, it's I, amazing. It's world building. It's, yeah. it's that's the sort of thing that made me not get all the way through Cryptonomicon. I need to give it another try when I've got a little bit more headspace. But well, what's interesting about Baroque Cycle and also Cryptonomicon for me? is that I tried to sit down, because Johnny recommended Baroque Cycle to me initially, and I tried to sit down and read them. And did you recommend them to him? I recommended them to both of you way before. I mean, I've drank a lot <laughs> but, since then, Karen. Yeah, it's fine. No, you didn't. <laughs> Cryptonomicon and Stevenson? Not, yeah. No, I learned about them from Rob. Yeah. And I learned about, about them from Rob in, like, high school. Okay, so you all get credit. Oh, okay, then. I'm sorry. I know. I know that's. I knew you had been. I know. I knew you had told me to read Cryptonomicon before. No, maybe you told me about Stevenson. Yeah. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We've all read them. Yeah. They're great books. Yeah. But I know what you're going to say, Joe. I forgot what I was going to say. I know what you're going to say. You you... were going to say that uh, you like you tried to read them and you were like, "I'm too dumb," and you kept trying. Yep. So you had to listen to the audio books first. Nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So I tried to read it too, and I was having trouble because it is so such a meticulously built world. Um. That I li- ended up like after the first book, I listened to the whole series and then I went back and read it. And I've actually re listened oh, to it several times. I feel like I could read it better now that so, I've listened to yes. it. Yeah, that yes. makes sense to let's, me. Let's take a quick foray. That's audiogenic learning, right? Versus like yeah. kinesthetic. Did you, did you call it a foray? A foray? Yeah, like a, a foray, like into, you know, let's go foray. on a foray into the woods. Uh, whatever. Well, yeah. because, because I'm the opposite, <laughs> I read all of them. Fine, and then I tried yeah. to listen to Cryptonomicon, and I could not. That makes and I sense. feel like if I have the paper I, copy, then I'll. Get I wonder if it. you had the same uh, voice actor that I had because I wasn't a huge fan of that. Simon guy. Preble. No, no, no. Cryptonomicon was not Simon Preble, uh, or at least not the one. Because Simon Preble is God, as far as great. I'm concerned. He, he, yeah. His voice is. Although, did you? He's read, my dad, Did yeah. you read or listen to Good Omens? Because I listened to it. Read I, it. I really like that. Oh, narrative. I read it. Yeah. Oh, I listened to it. Well, I, I, I'm actually not quite done with it i have like a chapter left but can't wait for the show oh i have um I've, i'm finishing american american gods we're the, oh nice the, we're, the we'll labs do, we've family done a on game a... in episode before we'll do another one. Oh, okay good i didn't know that oh yeah we did yeah. one basically on his norse mythology book oh cool oh cool that's what our norse mythology episode is mostly that's where most of the research i did on the works for on me. the mythos behind it's more research was. than i did and i built off of that i just googled stuff from yeah. the books and the edit but i feel like things. audio books the the narrator is if I don't click with the narrator, it's not going to work for me. Absolutely, at, at all. Yeah, you don't. And, want George Costanza reading the book to you. <laughs> Risk management. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Simon Preble really does it for me. Uh, it, there's just something, and and his voice for that type of story, I feel like, really works. He just has that kind of. I don't. It's there's just an air to it that that really clicked with me. That I I was really. I was really able to lock in with. So yeah. I'm also too dumb to read the print version. I honestly do believe that. I felt, no, no, I felt like that too. And I listened to it and then I went back and I read them when I had like a, a I finally had like a shitty desk job, yeah. like an overnight where I just had to sit there, you know, yeah. one of those well, shitty it's, security it's, it's jobs very basically. Daunt- and I had the yeah. time to read it after having known it. Yeah. And it is such a rich book. Like I've, I've listened yeah. to the audio books in full like three times by now. Um, well, it's, it's it's some of my favorite. I think part of it too is that on. when you're listening to it, you just hit play and it's in your ears, and you keep listening to it because it's a story. Whereas the book, I remember, I tried to read the first one and immediately said this isn't going to happen. And then so I listened to a bunch, and then at some point I tried to start System of the World because you gave me the books, right. and I said, oh, let me just try to start reading this, and I opened it, and I got through two pages and just said, who? Princess yeah. Caroline is just her dress yeah. is being it? described. Yeah. This is taking like an hour to get through this <laughs> page and a half. Though to be fair, the first one, the because it starts off in America. Yeah, it starts off with Enoch Root. 
chilling yeah. with Ben Franklin. It starts child, off closer to the end ben than Franklin. the beginning. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's like s- the seventeen. What is it? Like seventeen, thirteen, or fourteen? It starts it's off before he comes back. System of the world. Begins. Right. Yeah. Right before he lands yeah. in Plymouth, and the whole mm-hmm. like we're not going to try to explain the book. This is for people who have listened. Right. It has to be. It has to be. <laughs> so he he takes the uh, he takes the carriage ride, and he's like ride with his raccoon skin coat. Remember, he, he has like a raccoon skin coat he brought from North America because like, like, oh, it's a oh, little cold yeah, out Daniel? here. He's like, I'm from Boston. I, I got this. Uh, and yeah, and he, yeah. it gets blown up when he gets to London. But he, he's wearing it and like all the Englishmen are like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, we yeah. don't have those here. But if you get through those that first chapter of chapters, then it becomes a bit easier to read. Oh, I think it's it's one of those worlds, too, that's so cool because it is also a real world. Oh yeah, and and I love how I, so to me a, a big part of what I really enjoy about those those books in the Baroque cycle is that Stevenson's just so clever at coming up with ways of filling in the holes, filling in the gaps. There's this scene I forget in which book where they're trying to figure out how to name New York because they just bought yes, it. Great scene and. Yeah. That's a good question. How did they name New York? I have no idea. And Daniel points out all the things that you point historians have pointed out since. Like they're going to name it yeah. New York after the Duke of York, and they're like, or no, they said, what should we give it? So I was like, well, like the King, or it was named for um, King James, Prince James. Oh yeah, they were Scottish gonna, King or whatever. I think right. They were going to call it after King after him, yeah. and he was like, well, if you're going to name it after him. Or he he won the battle that got them the city and the treaty. I think they're like, oh, so you should dedicate it to yeah. him. They're like, okay, well, you should name it after. Uh, yeah, they he he says something like that. Like you should name it after. He's actually the lord of this city, not York or something. Oh yeah, like they picked New York and he goes. Well, it's supposed to be dedicated to this guy who won yeah. us the island. Why wouldn't you name? And what's the name he comes up with? I forget. Maybe he so- does come up with New York, and they shout him down. I forget who actually comes up with it, but it's God, it's, messing it's, it up now. It's the same reason why I really like that show Rome because they did did the same thing in that show where we have sort of the the plot points, but in terms of what they actually said and how those conversations went, who, who the who the fuck knows? And who knows who else was involved? Yeah, Enoch Root might have shown up <laughs> and made an appearance. But it is or, kind or of King Solomon or whoever the fuck. Yeah, else. It, it starts yeah. off with the wizard showing up to get the Hobbit to come back. You know to. To wrap this hobbit back up. Oh into my god, you're quest. right. <laughs> like it literally <laughs> starts on the edge of the way. world. Being Enoch like, is yeah, Gandalf. Yeah, I'm pressing you back. Yeah, he Gandalfs him back into service. I also but... I like Enoch way better in Baroque Cycle. I did not like him in Cryptonomicon. Uh, well, it's a very different character. He kind of very ret- different. He kind of retconned it all from Cryptonomicon. Yeah, that came out first. And so when and I think. I think he said he had started doing the research for Cryptonomicon and he was just like studying Churchill and he read mm. his history of the John Churchill, the character from the Baroque cycle. Oh, and that's what really got him into the, more into the period of like the English Civil War and everything and how, how yeah. it was such like a revolutionary time because they went from you yeah. see Daniel's childhood is described really well as like still fairly medieval. Uh, even though it's like yeah. the 1600s already, and it ends, and it's like a modern world with banking and global yeah. commerce. Well, that's what's cool about the book. These you institutions see that, that never existed. Yeah, yeah. it's well, all about that transition. Yeah, and and so much of it is fact, and a lot of the science is fact, like the stuff about yeah, the right. phosphorus, the stuff about how they did. Oh man, the, boil that pee. The the, the Eurolith surgery, actually. What, Robert Hook. They even or, address like. Wait, is that it, getting cut for the stone? Yes. Oh, fuck and that. When Johnny, when Johnny was <laughs> yeah, reading them yeah. five or six years ago, we he visited Glasgow and we went up to the museum in the University of Glasgow. The, the Hunterian? The Hunterian Museum. Amazing and museum. And you can see all of the instruments that they use to cut for the stone and they have examples of giant bladder stones. And it's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Like size yeah. of like, like uh, citrus fruit, like lemon, lime size well, fucking the, balls of, of who calcium. Was the, who was the guy in the... Uh, in the Baroque cycle, Peeps, who, he, Samuel Peeps. He had him in like a a vial around his neck mm-hmm. as kind of war survival. Oh no, tokens. that was a different guy. Peeps had kept it in his pocket and would hold it. Oh, is that what he did? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, I forget. I forget how how he he, he, he would keep it in a pocket and he would hold it and take it out all the time. And Daniel was like, "That's so weird. Like, why do you do that?" And after he gets, it, he's like, "I get it." Yeah. Daniels are given to him in a vial, and he wears that for a while. I think. Oh, okay. 
to remind him. But like, and 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 Peeps Samuel Peeps was a real guy who whose diaries. That's what you, mean? you don't know no that part is true. Who's it, real and who's made the fuck up? But he makes that Great. so interesting. That to the historical well, that's the cool thing part. is that it, it it's very you you just think yeah. oh yeah this seems plausible. Peeps was a yeah. a uh, famous diarist, and we have a lot of his diaries. And he wrote about that's and cool. he survived getting cut for the stone. And there's writings about it. Like he wrote Not things. Everybody did. And well, my, that's why my he was favorite, able to. <laughs> my favorite Samuel Peeps story, which I think might be referenced in the Baroque cycle, he like gives a throwaway line about it is a true thing, is during the fire of London, he was there in 1666, and his land got burned. Mm. Or, and so, or I think the lot he was staying at got burned. And so he fled, and he like just grabbed, like I think, a couple of books or something, because they had time. And he, but he, or he had some cheese that he didn't really want to take with him, but he had this like nice rare cheese he wanted to save, so he yeah. buried it in the garden real quick and left, and then he came back. How do you bury cheese in the 1600s? It was in the garden. It's probably damp soil. He just covered it, wrapped it in a cloth, he covered it up, and when he came back, the fire had burned over it, and the cheese was fine. Wouldn't the worms eat it? it? I mean, it's quick, and no, they're all burning from the fire above them, right? They're going to go deeper. I guess they're not going to look burn. for cheese. Che- yeah. It's probably cheesecloth. I don't know a lot about cheesecloth, but I assume it's pretty... I, I just I just love that he did something and like something that like minute from a, a major event like the fire of London is, is he, like he wrote it down. Yeah. So that's why he threw that character in because he's such a good source. Yeah. But of, then again, they also the have like in the broke cycle, like Newton dying in like a gilded carriage in a castle or something. Oh, well, uh, that's, he gets brought back to life. Do you know what's funny about that? With <laughs> magic gold. Because I, I, <laughs> okay. so I only finished the series maybe a couple months ago. Yeah. And Stevenson, because he does like a 30 second introduction to each of his books. And I love how he starts the, the last book, how he introduces it. Because he basically says, how, Oh, yeah, there's. Um, I got <laughs> a separate the, the, the track, thing about peeps it's working um <laughs> sorry we had a little kerfuffle there Samuel yeah. peeps, uh we're gonna yes. pivot now mm. uh, we're gonna pivot from let's we let's talk about, about pick your favorite v- book out of the seven volumes eight volumes there's the first one quicksilver oh, yeah then king of the vagabond yeah, i was gonna say there's a clear winner <laughs> then odalisk right which is the one where jack shafto essentially becomes magellan that's the next well, one I was about to say. Well, he that's, essentially becomes um, uh, Jack Sparrow Magellan. That's, he really does. Yeah. Oh, what is it? It's the confusion is... Um, it's before confusion, I think, right? No, no, no. It's not? Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm just blanked. I was about to say it. The fourth and fifth book is a two-part volume, and it's the confusion, and he jumps between them because the chronology is so important. Yeah. Well, um, I think the one where he goes around the world takes, like, 20 years. It does. He can't. It takes it. most of Jack Shafto's the life. The system of the world. <laughs> no, well, the, that's the, the middle. Volume, the middle think, books. Right? The fourth book in it. Uh, it's my favorite one. Yeah, it's where he meets Moza and uh, Dappa, and it's yeah. where all those guys. The Bonanza 13th, and Bonanza, Bonanza and Junkto. Bonanza and That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it st- it starts with him being like, "Oh yeah, I'm alive because I." The malaria burned away my syphilis brain. It's great. Yeah, he, he wakes up to <laughs> the cannons. Slave, in is slavery. It malaria? Whilst, is that... whilst I was in slavery, it was some like, you know. I thought it was some bacterial fever. infection from. Yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it was malaria. He had the pox. Oh, no, he had the. Yeah, he had the pox. He it was had some syphilis. It was some fever yeah. dream. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, he, he went into a deep fever that burnt off his syphilis. Some type of African fever. Yeah, yeah. he's from England. He wasn't mm. able to handle it. It's one of those things that's supposed to kill you, but he was Jack Shafto. Well, so. they, they put him in the dead guy pile. He's Bring been in many a couple of times. Guy they did. But one of the great the great thing is he wakes up. I remember this specifically because I want to tie it to beer. He wakes <laughs> up on the beach, <laughs> and when um, I think Moser or I think Dappa is telling him, he's like, "Well, what happened?" He's like, "Yeah, we thought you were dead." He gets put on the dead pile, or he gets put in a, like a mausoleum or somewhere where they put the dead people. Yeah, and then they heard ghosts in there, so they sent the slaves in because they're like, "Oh, there's a Christian ghost. Like, we'll burn some slaves. We'll send a Jewish slave in." Yeah, and Moza goes in there, and he said he was there, like, crazy with the fever. And he was demanding a best pint, the best pint of your bitters from the... They were, he had just come out of the fever, but, like, a best yeah. pint of your, your bitters, right. please. He thought he was at the bar, and he's banging on the, the crypt yeah. and screaming in English, so it scared them. Yeah. And then Jack's replies goes, well, that's crazy. The, the, the light, crisp beers of Pilsen are much more uh, um, suited to this climb. <laughs> like he's just like that's not the beer you would drink here. Uh, like he, he, as his a- yeah. adult brain, he was still like, no, you would want a pilsner. 
This yeah. is the desert. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm forgetting. I, I just love that. That's when you're like, oh yeah, Jack Shafto, or all I'm the street re- smarts. Yeah, I'm remembering now how insane if you really track. He's really smart if you think about it. He speaks like oh, yeah. five or six languages really well. He pulls off all those schemes and yeah. plots, like the mint heist. Well, I always, is so I always thought, I I always thought that was it. that was kind of his purpose as a character. Is that he's almost in his world. He's their Daniel he's the king of the, of the vagabonds. Or, or their yeah. Isaac Newton. I'm not quite sure where he falls in that spectrum. But He's the potential of that class. Exactly. There were great people yeah. amongst the peasants. They just didn't yeah. have chances to yeah. most of them. Well, because that's what, that's like, if you take Isaac and Daniel, Isaac's kind of, in terms of the brain power, he's the ultimate iteration of that, right? And then Daniel Waterhouse is kind of the scientific communicator version of that. Right. Where he has more actual social skills and abilities. And so Jack Shafto is kind of just, he's got a little bit of everything going on. He can talk to people. He can get stuff done in the yeah. vagabond world. He's the king. You're right. But he's also insane. He's got the imp of the perverse. Yeah. And he's also insanely lucky, though. And, and half his brain b- melted from syphilis, and the other half was burnt yeah. away by the fever so that killed him. But he's so clever. Thing. Do you remember with the spear <laughs> and, the, and the chicken with the crocodile when he had to get the mast in Malabar? That's a, I don't Wait, know if that... Remind me. I, I don't know if that know. sentence has been uttered in history. The brand new sentence? Yeah, that might be so, a brand new so one. We should queen, have a buzzer for that on the podcast when we say an original sentence. <laughs> the queen of Malabar was angry that he tried to bang her. Oh, right. oh didn't and, his and sons wind up to, banging her? Yeah, but he tried to bang her, and because he only had half of a of a penis he's like a different cast that's not allowed to like even like associate with her in Wait, that you mean way? the half penis cast yeah, apparently in malabar it was like some like he broke some rule <laughs> about like about, you don't want to you know cross I mean? that taboo line i think, in I think malabar, he was technically a type, of, a type of hermaphrodite there or something he said oh. something about she got pissed when she saw his penis and so well she, yeah she was angry at him so to, t- to she promised him the mast for his ship Oh, because he Cause didn't have the mask? She was an investor in the ship, and the mask was getting delivered, but she was angry at him. So she, to test him, she released it down the river and said, because they had to float it down oh, yeah. the, through the bay, to the That's bay. Right. So he, he released it in the crocodile-infested river and says, if you can get the mast and didn't anchor it to get the ship eaten, before eaten it, it gets washed out to the bay, then, you know, the, you're the captain of the ship. But if not, then you're going to die. You know, trial by combat against... But the combat crocodiles and rivers. crocodiles in the river, <laughs> and Jack handles it real well. At first, he's like, "What?" and he takes a second. He's like, "Uh, yep, I'm gonna have to do this." Like he figures it out pretty quick, yeah, and starts running. And he grabs stuff as he's running. He grabs, a, I think, a fishing spear, some rope, and a chicken. And like that's such good foresight for how little time he had to come up with a plan and what was available. Those are the three things you grab. You waste time grabbing. But see, that's Isaac Newton level genius, right? And then and then <laughs> he, he throws. He what does he yeah. do? He tries to put the spear in the crocodile's mouth, and that doesn't work. Or no, like the, he, the, so he throws. He ties the rope around the chicken. I he tries to throw. This, yeah. The chicken and throws the chicken at the gators to distract them. Right. And when one eats it, that one gets close to him. Like he said, like he had heard that if you put the stick in their mouth, it'll stop him. He's like, I don't think that would work. So he throws the spear, I think, and it gets stuck on something. And so when the, the crocodile tries to swim, it tries to pull the chicken out of him. Like the the line is hilarious. He goes, "What?" Then what went on between the alligator, the rope, and the chicken? Jack wasn't sure because he was like swimming frantically, <laughs> you know, down river. Yeah. But he manages to get the mast. But the point is, that's distracting enough. Like that's right. done its job. <laughs> yeah. You know? he, like he's like, "All right, man, killing crocodiles yeah. and no resources. I got this." And he pulls it off. And even the queen, who like kind of pissed at him, was impressed. Yeah. And I I would that was I, a, would, the, yeah. I would say is the queen. That's pretty good for half a cock. That's not right? bad. He builds a teak battleship in the sixty in the late sixty early seventeen. I don't know. It's whenever gotta be, yeah. yeah, yeah. In the Baroque era, late he, 1600s. He, he builds yeah a, a teak battleship when all the other ones were I don't know, oak. What were they using in England? Pine's good. I don't know. Pine's good. I guess pine floats. Is it porous? I don't know. No, uh, pine, it's just whatever. Like, they it's definitely just a, didn't have teak yeah. in Western Europe, right? And he picks it specifically because it algae and bugs like don't eat it that well. I remember that game, that video game, Uncharted Waters for Super Nintendo. Teak was the expensive wood. It's yeah, it's always yeah. Been, yeah. That was a good because that's that what he says wood. to his sons. He goes, "Why are you using this wood?" He goes, "Like it grows all over Hind, which is the word for India." And he goes, "Yeah, but you haven't told us why you grow it." And he turns and stares at him. He goes, "Because it grows all over Hind." And the other brother's like, "Oh, he's saying all the bugs here can't eat it because there's uh, just so many bugs and everything." He's like, "Yeah, it's really hardy wood. It grows all over this like." You know, tough landscape. Yeah, that becomes an important ship too. 
for the rest it's, of the story. It's a dope ship. It, yeah. it, like you said, he circumnavigates with it. Yeah, he makes it pretty much. Yeah. Well, I gets, love the whole Manila galleon Europe. and and the whole Pacific oh, voyage. Yeah, and the, incredible. The guy, the, the like, yeah, the evil guy. Yeah, Wait, oh, was, he's, was, he's one of the few characters that I think like Stevenson usually makes people pretty even. Yeah, but that character, like it's he's like he's evil. arch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's arch, but that's I the love kind how of Sim- villains of the time. I love how Simon Preble plays him in the audiobook. It's Mary like, yes, yes. I, yes for the I don't think so, for Chateau. the for the Catholic Church we shall restore order. But he's it's just pretty a, great. He's, I, it's cuz he he leans into that sort of cliche yeah. character. But the character also he explains his motivations pretty clearly. And and he oh, even yeah. and they're explained so well. He works with Jack, Jack yeah. for like 15 years in England uh, trying you know fucking with the currency. And, and also, didn't like they work together before he finally wait, turns was he the on guy him and tries he, to kill him. Was he the guy he rescued in the ocean? Yeah, that's how it started. He yeah. burned down the Manila Galleon. He decided to have an auto de fe on a ship in the middle of the Pacific. Yeah, because you know he also he, visits Jack as a ghost in the last. He book, does when Jack's, when being, Jack's being pressed pressed to death. <laughs> to death and, and he comes in the press room. That's an amazing conversation because he's still evil, but he's also slightly enlightened because he's he's dead now. And he still he he, but he still kind of hates. Well, Jack. he mentions that he's there because he th- this is his sort of duty, and so he never admits that he was evil. But there's an awareness that oh yeah, I was pretty fucked up. Yeah, in I'm my trying to make I'm making up for stuff. <laughs> yeah, because why else am I giving you advice, Jack Shaft? Right. My whole I, I said I've said so many times how I my the only You're the e- only challenge in life is trying to decide who I want to murder more, you or Eliza, you know? Right. Like, you're, you're the most evil people. And that's yeah. not what he's like as a ghost. He still is kind of pissed because he he wanted to be right, but yeah. he realizes as a ghost. That whole last that's book kind of is great. For for how the series, like, spans decades so well, and then that, like, you know, jump, like, it gives it, it opens it up, but it can jump. And then that last book is pretty much like a, de- like a couple of days mm-hmm. from when Jack gets sentenced to went to his hanging. Well, day. wait, like is most of, like a couple of hundred pages straight the last, are like just the more, the hanging. Oh yeah, because the last like, book starts with uh, what's her name dying, right? Um, uh, the queen, not, queen Anne, Queen Anne, right? Doesn't doesn't isn't that pretty much how the book starts? The last one, yeah, I think she dies, and they start getting ready for King George. Yeah, George and then and Caroline and Johan go to England, and then you're right, it right. it sort of slows down. As yeah, it, moves on. it really yeah. slows down, and there's a yeah, there's the whole uh, there's the whole Daniel Waterhouse has to plan a heist to break the Shafto boys out of Newgate Prison, and he does oh, yeah. it over the course of like a few weeks. And that was pretty dope. And they're though. sneaking the in treasure the, hunt. Yeah, <laughs> he he does a fake treasure hunt. Yeah. Like yeah, Dan, awesome. and I love that Daniel is really the bridge. I don't know. If he's the community. I guess he is because he's the bridge between the the Newton well, world uh, and the Jack world. He's no, able to I, to I, function Enoch in both. Root he's the, the, the Flash bridge. world. Sorry, they call it right. Enoch Root would be the bridge. I I don't know if he's a bridge so much as a net. No, Enoch is. He, he kind of has his hands. He's the wizard. Right? Yeah, he's the connection to well, the to the story. He is a like, bridge between sort of the fantastical and the well, science, he's, though, he's, right? He's from. He's immortal. He's of one. Of, he's one of the like original men. He's like like God. He's yeah. Bible uh, Jewish thing. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he's mentioned. You know so he I mean. picked Enoch. Yeah, Green. no, he's 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 tied into that whole scene. For they sure. say it somewhere. I think someone said he's a character in many waters it's so, in, from Madeline Langle, I believe it's sort no, of in, in the Bible. Enoch. It's sort is, of a, it's is sort the of only impl- one that doesn't say when he dies. The whole begat and yeah. then lived until or died. They don't actually. They just say until he walked and then he walked with God. Right. So. The, uh, like Stevenson is interpreting that as he figured out how to walk with God, how to God, survive yeah. living on Earth. Yeah, it's, it's sort of implied God's that he's the guy from the Bible. It's yeah. never actually so like Solomon Cain or whatever his name. Can is. I no, stop what was us it? For oh, Solomon yeah, Cohen. Can we all just agree right now that season eight of Baroque Cycle would be way better than season eight of Game of Thrones? Oh yeah. Uh, you'd have to do twelve. If seasons, it's I if think. it's not, you would have to do twenty seasons of Rose. No, Cycle. you could do in twelve. I think because it's it's eight books, right? I, I so Here, wait, hold on. Let me read out the books. They yeah, are it's eight books. Quicksilver, King yeah, of the Vagabond, yeah. Odalisk, Bonanza, the Yuncto, Junkto, 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 Solomon's Gold, Currency, and System of the World. Is that yeah. seven or eight? Eight. That's eight. Yeah. Uh, Stevenson has has said that he wants it to be a series. 
Yeah, he doesn't want it to be a. But you got to do it right. It'd be terrible as a movie. You couldn't even do it as as a series of movies. You would need to do it as a show. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be great as I think it would be better than Game of Thrones. It would be well if it's written. Well, that's yeah. That well, it would be better than season seven and eight of Game of Thrones. I know that much. Maybe even oh, way better. But like even even the just the. Because you you wouldn't do first book, second book, you know, you tell all their stories. That's a good question. Right? How you would actually break that down? Because the series, I guess, you would have to do. You'd it have in, to have Enoch be the narrator, and he would just have to tell you it chronologically and jump from group to group. Yeah, you but could it, do it well. But it would take like ten years to film the series. Yeah, the 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 story well, takes place Thrones, over. It's been like eight, ten years. But the story years. takes place yeah. over like thirty something years, fifty years. So. They should age a little bit, and we have the technology. I saw Samuel Jackson in that Captain Marvel movie. Oh yeah, that's right. They just CGI you to look whatever age they want. Yeah, but that was Marvel money. How are you going to yeah, do that? This is money. HBO money. Uh, you were just complaining about CGI ghosts, and you know what? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> CGI ghosts. Okay, so uh, can we talk about Game of Thrones for just a second? No, no is an acceptable no. answer. This okay. is our. This is our. I, I wish we could. Uh, if only. <laughs> I mean, we're at almost thirty minutes. We can wrap this up. How are we going to wrap this up? We I just started. I think we still got time. I'm you want to talk excited. about Game of Thrones? No, well, I just wanted to bash no, one scene. No. Um, no. I, so I, I want to. <laughs> I, I'm going to say my favorite uh, scene in the Broke Cycle is when Bob is in Ireland and is fighting oh. the dude. Oh, my God. I know what you're going to say. I don't remember who he's fighting, <laughs> but like it's just epic, and it's so... Um, it's kind of it's kind of biblical and like he like somebody gets yeah. stabbed and it just well like, he gets stabbed oh beautiful. man what's that little he, shit's name again Bo- Bob gets stabbed. Jeffrey's buddy wait right? that's that's the one where Bob Lord gets, Upton Bob gets right? stabbed and pinned like down I think yeah he gets stabbed in the liver yeah. and then uh, his, he like stabs through him and then so uh, what's his name Sean pa- Sean something T- was it T Partry shows up with a giant with stick. a stick and goes that's you're, you're doing it all wrong fighting with a sword. You gotta just get a big which stick is, and beat him to death. Which is actually it. very Game of Thrones too, where Bob was trying to have this epic biblical final duel fight him to on get back terms. his lover, and Teak Partridge just like, "You're doing it all wrong, laddie. You gotta hit him before he gets to you." And he just <laughs> knocks the guy down and then beats him to death. And then he goes, "And you keep hitting him until he don't get up no more." And then he just yeah. beats him to death with a log because he's just a big Irishman. Yeah. <laughs> and then later, like a book later. That's a great scene, though. Daniel yeah, is I talking to somebody about him. And he's like, apparently he died in the Battle of the Boyne fight, uh, valiantly defending himself against 30 armed Irishmen or something. <laughs> like the story that is told yeah. is like, no, See, he got that, beaten to the death with, the, a sp- with a stick and a peat bog. That, that, but that's what I love about Stevenson, how he gives you that those details where, yeah, yeah. that's maybe probably how something like that would actually happen, right? And and you actually get to see that. It's very believable. The fight over yeah. the ditch where they're fighting, you know, Bob keeps trying to jump the ditch, and then that's how he stabs yeah, him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just two guys, like, they're fighting, yeah. and there's, like, a weird natural boundary, and, like, yeah. one fucks up, and then, yeah, Big Irishman comes in with a stick. Well, or Eliza harpooning people with cellos. Okay, so yeah, I was. Just oh, about yeah, that was just pretty fantastic. <laughs> my my other <laughs> That's favorite. Ridiculous. That's I don't so know good. why I love this bit so much, but the challenge of Eliza trying to get wood in France. Oh, is so oh, yeah. cool. That's the brutal yeah. like world building science part of his science fiction. Like yeah. he's gonna explain to you the real. logistics of war material in the 1600s, yeah, and you're like, gonna why, you're gonna experience why you that. Don't yeah. buy. Even though you're He's in so France, good at that. while you don't buy wood and try to ship it in France, yeah. you have to buy it internationally. And it, I mean, it has such yeah. reaching. Like when once you understand that whole like couple chapters or whatever it is, it makes you understand why like half of our pork doesn't come from the United States or like why our well, milk comes from from England. Yes, and it was great. Was the guy who he was a like a bastard Darkashan, right? I forget his name, but like he had made money in India and stuff, being a merchant. He he did it to her. The conversation where he enlists her, he goes, well, where do we get our lumber? And she says, and he's like, why don't we get it from France? We're full of forests. It's ours already. And she's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. You want me to get some? And he's like, yeah, here you go. And, and he knew she was going to fail. Yeah. He did it on did. purpose, like you're saying. And then, but like she learns that lesson and she gets way better at it than that guy ever was. Yep. When she, when she, do you remember she explains, uh, what is, she explains recoinage and stuff. And a cur- basically how fiat currencies work through like dough balls, and she lays out. Oh her, yeah, she lays out her whole right. plan for insurance fraud right. too as part of it. Yeah, and then does it anyways, and then 
that's how she takes down the House of Hacklehaber. She makes a bunch of bets because she has insider information about when the war is going to end. And she gets him to agree to... So she sells the contract to Hacklehaber on a war that he knows will never happen. And she knows it'll never happen, but she physically takes the notes and shows up in London and is like, you owe me a million pounds silver. Like, where is it? You have to give it to me. And she totally just tanks his whole country, mm-hmm. his whole company. And But she still gets the most of the first payment out of him. Yeah, but he and then she just keeps it and never gives and reinvests but, it yeah. and then pays France back later. It's pretty but, smart. Because it was free money anyways. He takes her son. Right, because that's why she does this. And then when he ships the silver to pay the debt, she has a Captain Bart capture that ship and be like, well, that's just piracy. There's nothing I could do. So she pays France back with their, his money, and then she gets to keep the other money she already stole from him. And she does it so well. She, yeah. The way she shorts that guy's stock and like melts down his lead warehouse in Amsterdam... Like she, see, she does see, a bunch of like crazy stuff. This is why I feel like people would stuff. really like so like this as a show because because I mean, ver- it's modern shit. Well, that's so. very Games of Thronesy. Oh yeah, but it's it's, it's not real. Game- Sorry, but but it's in it's in the Over real it. world. But you know, I I mean, it's Games of Thronesy in terms of political, financial manipulation and intrigue and all that shit. You Quick know, beer update. Johnny is passing around a growler of the. Dry you don't need to pour that much, Jesus from- beer. <laughs> oh, I'm not ready. Joy, I'm not. I'm not ready. Oh, he's drinking from the from the growler. Okay, get it. Well, we're get here. It. We're here live, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm really doing it. Yeah, I, I I think that's what it comes down to, though. It's so cool that you, you get the the historical fiction of it, but you learn a lot. Yeah, I mean, it would be a very cerebral show, but I mean, what what HBO show isn't or BBC? I mean, HBO is showing the new. Um, uh, think, his dark materials, yeah. which I'm going to make you two read. Are they doing the good? Out. They're doing Good Omens too, or is that Amazon? I think it's, it's Amazon, Amazon or mm-hmm. Netflix okay. or something. I thought it's it was not Netflix. Them. It's not HBO though. But, but I think people could HBO. handle uh, Amazon. Cycle. Amazon could do Baroque Cycle probably because they, they can put out 20 seasons of something. It's just more content for Amazon. Yeah. Well, right? now that now that they are paying robots to box everything, they you know they can spend all that. Eventually, money. they'll get rid of cameramen. It'll just be a drone that flies around and records the actors pretending stuff. You yeah. know, that's kind of what it already is. Yeah, but there's still humans sitting there making like union salary. Once you can cut out the human element, then the economy runs uh, perfectly. I believe, I believe that Bezos has shut down <laughs> unions. <laughs> um, but you, that, union. but this like Sad modern capitalistic system that's run away like the, the with itself. The roots of it are are explained in the broke cycle. Like English yeah. banking is a joke at the beginning of it. Remember, there's a scene at the fair, a Scarborough fair, where Daniel and Isaac are arguing with the Jewish lens grinder guy because they need lenses oh, for their yeah. microscopes. And, yeah. and they they're like, okay, they finally agree on a price, and then they they pull out their wallet, and it's like just a mixture of all different coins from different years, different kings on them, different qualities, yeah. and they're just arguing over what each coin's actually yeah, worth, right. and they just show you how like horrible and medieval that is. Like You're right. arguing over the value of trinkets to trade for other trinkets. Yeah. It's so complicated. You need the system of yeah, the world. And that idea, yeah, that system <laughs> of the world, the standardization yeah. of things and units and stuff, and Newton specifically leads to it yeah. when he runs the mid. It does. It does give it, a lot of context so for good. how we got to where we are today. Uh, Princess Caroline in the last book, I think it's either right before or after the epic philosophical debate between uh, what's Leibniz and, yeah, and Newton. And, Newton. Yeah, and she, she says how she wants them to, you know, uh, make up and get together because she wants to figure out this system because she knows she the planet. Well, she knows that this is going to rule the world for some time to come. She doesn't know how long. But this is what we're going to have moving forward. And she says if it's built on a rotten foundation, it's going gonna, it's gonna to crumble. It's not going to last. Right. But the question is, well, what, what exactly does that mean, right? How do you know if it's never been done before? And that's, that's sort of the beauty, but also the problem of it, right? Yeah. And that's why the conversation just, just devolves to them arguing about the nature of the universe. Yeah, arguing about the uh, practical. Vegeta- vegetative material versus immaterial. Right, and, yeah. What yeah. is reality? What is I actually, I what printed out, I, I copied that things. chapter of that debate for a student because she was, she was talking about how she was really struggling with the fact that she grew up super, raised super Catholic. And right. She said, I'm not because that's, I started reading philosophy and realized that's all bullshit to be like, it, I just mean in the very 
it's different to learn Catholicism as yeah the very life, singular context yeah exactly versus, that she was like brought learning up in, it after yeah. learning about the rest of the world and she started yeah. mentioning some philosophers I and I said oh man I have something I need you to read and so I scanned the chapter and sent it, uh, and gave it to her and she she said she read it and she was just like exactly she yeah. was like that was crazy do, do you think she went on to read the books maybe I don't it was this semester so I don't think she oh, did okay. but. Maybe she will. I, I hope know. so. Like, but she was blown away by the by the conversation between them. Like, she really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so as a um, as a writing professor, do you have to have a pretty like eidetic memory for books? Uh, well, because Johnny, I feel like as, you know, especially with something like game. Uh, sorry, with um, Baroque Cycle that he's read or listened to like five or seven times. A lot that that we could say something and Johnny will you know as he's demonstrated so far this conversation oh, yeah, be able to bring up like a conversation like almost line for line. Do you have that? Uh, that's I a good. Don't. That's a good question. I definitely i I have a very selective memory by nature, and I don't know why. But I've also only ever re- I've only ever reread one book. Really, Lord of the Rings. Very close. Hobbit. Yep. Oh. Yeah, the only book I've ever really? reread never, is the you Hobbit. Haven't, you haven't reread Lord of the Rings? Nope, I've read Lord of the Rings like three times in its entirety so far. Nope, I only. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably around there. Uh, you know why? Because Christopher Lee, I read, I saw him in an interview. He say, reads it, or he read it once a year. No, every five years, he said he tried to reread the whole series. Oh, really? So, like, pretty much every other year, he was starting yeah, he was pretty the boss. next book. Yeah, and he would just like, and I was like, "That's pretty cool." And I tried it once, and I was like, "Wow, I got more out of it than the first time." Yeah. And then I did it another time, and I was like, "I picked up things I don't think I did." Yeah, either. I can't remember. So it's not like lines, it was milk dry, but I can remember scenes very well. Cool. It's like my favorite. Uh, who was it that I, we said on the podcast before? Ralph Waldo Emerson. What he says, his famous quote: "I remember the books I've read as much as the meals I've eaten. Yet yeah. they made me who I am. All the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all input." Well, this is what I teach. Actually, it's funny you, you bring that up because this is what I teach with writing, too. One of the things I've told my students in the past, I mean, I think it's probably more true with creative writing, at least for me. But I used to be in this mode where, especially if I was maybe exercising or running or something, and I observed something very closely, such as how the trees were waving in the breeze with the sunlight, and I would think to myself, oh, man, I know exactly how to describe that specific image or scene or whatever in an interesting, unique way. Right. So let me like stop and write that down in my journal because I don't want to lose that specific wording or phrasing. And then I realize, well, I can do that with anything in life. Any image is different or unique. Even if you look at a table, it's a different table from another table. It's just a matter of whether or why that's worth describing with what else you're trying to do. And so what I realized is that when I have these interesting moments of thinking of how to describe something, what's really more important is sort of synthesizing that that feeling that I get the effect from it, from describing it. Because then I can say, oh, when I have to describe something else in my writing at a different point, how do I get back to that feeling of, oh, yeah, that's that's that, right on it's point. perspective. Yeah, that's yeah. making me feel a certain way or or perceive in a certain way or highlight a certain tone or mood or, or perspective is a good good mm. broad encompassing way to put it maybe so i i, I think i sort of yeah that's sort of how that i think sense. of books i've read too in terms of the details maybe yeah because i like specific lines not not th- there's always some but but i've listened also it's but a, you've the, yeah you've I've reread to it. it's yeah. not just reading i've listened to it and yeah. he he delivers those lines i would like so to. well the audiobook but, is i just really feel like there's always more to read John, which is why have i haven't that done kind it of memory you um, really do. Yeah, it's very selective, though. I don't control it. Like, yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, me too. Where... And it's also as we're talking Actually, about it, too. more is bubbling up to the surface. <laughs> you know, I, I can't come. Like, I couldn't have quoted a lot. Of, <laughs> I couldn't have quoted this a lot off the top of my head. And I bet if I had listened to a little bit of it today, it would have been like better. But I actually haven't listened to it in like over a year. I've been pretty. I've been doing. That's crazy. To do it, other took stuff me, and it took to me. It took me probably heard it six years times. to listen through these books. They're epic. They are. It is an epic. It's a long series, and, but and it's Johnny, worth it. Johnny will tell you about the. Have you 
lectured on the definition of epic and how people misuse it on this podcast oh, yet? Oh, not just on this. Oh, yeah. Wait, I misuse epic? How do I No, you it? don't, no, people, but like, people do. The people. I think we've covered it in our the language people. episode. People say epic to be like, yo, that burger was epic. It's like, it took you three minutes to eat it. That's not an epic burger. Epic has to do with the length of something. It's yeah. great in the sense that like the Grand Canyon is grand. It's not a grand old time. It's a grand canyon. It's who, large Who calls their scale. burgers epic? Just people use epic wrong. That's an epic movie. It was an hour and 26 yeah, that's minutes. Epic. That's not an epic movie. Ben-Hur yeah. was an epic because it was four hours long in the 60s or whatever. When yeah, they didn't do I, that. I, I understand that. You know, like, so Lord, a Game of Thrones, you can say, is an epic because there's like 80 hour-long episodes, right? It's, it's like, it, like 800 it's an on, hours of a yeah, show. Yeah, it's an ongoing story for you know. days. Of, right. Of, that makes things more. Yeah. E- that makes epic. So Baroque Cycle yeah. is epic. The stories cover yeah. you know ha- almost a century. And right. I-, I love Daniel's dad. Having too, said though. that, and we talk about him. An epic oh my god, that crazy really motherfucker! Good. Wait, Daniel's. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, what's his name? The not, fucking Puritan Drake. Lunatic. No, what was his name? It was Drake? Wasn't it? Drake. Right? Drake. Drake. Or, or did you just put that in our heads and now we? Yeah, how do we not know? know. How do we not know this? Name? It was something the something the Drake. God, we're so prepared. Damn. <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about how he had no nose, but Daniel knew he could argue. He cut with off him. his own nose, right? No, it got it got cut off for printing libels, printing oh, religious yeah. libels. Yeah, he was a pain in the ass. But and he, even people who like met Daniel, who thought he was a wormy dude, were like. Yeah, your dad scares me. Like, I'm not gonna fuck with you. Yeah, he was he was crazy religious nut, right? Yeah. What was he? Was he a Puritan or, or something else? Uh, I'm gonna look it up. I forget. What the fuck is that? I don't know. I thought my phone. Was oh yeah, up. your phone's on the table where my microphone's hooked up, so it made a terrifying <laughs> uh, buzzing sound. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, that yeah, guy it was, was crazy. Drake. It was Drake Waterhouse. It was, yeah. He named his sons Ra- Raleigh Waterhouse, Sterling Waterhouse, Mayflower Waterhouse, Daniel. Wait, pra- where were, Praise where, God Waterhouse. Wait, These are the family's names. I didn't Wait, know he still had brothers. Waterhouse. Where were his brothers in this? I don't well, remember. He brothers. has half sure brothers. No, I think he has half brothers yeah, yeah. that are like like the ham. Remember the whole goldsmiths thing? And he's in the goldsmith shop when the mob remember. comes to collect the money. That was part of the whole medieval banking system. So this happened. This is part of the history. Charles II. Borrowed a bunch of money from the local, the, the city's uh, goldsmiths, because they were the bankers of the time, because they had the gold. So you yeah. would, and you would give them a bunch of your gold, and they would write you a receipt for it, and then you could get a smaller amount of receipt you could use to pay for something. So it was like a banking system, a medieval banking system that developed. So the king went to them and said, "You're going to lend me all your gold. I'm the king. It's a good loan." And they're like, <laughs> uh, "Okay." And then after he spent all the gold, he goes, "Yeah, I'm the king. I don't owe you anymore. I decided." And so that caused the the the, vent, the lenders to show up and be like, our, "Where's our gold?" And they go in the vault and it's empty. Remember, they have to escape over the through the roof and they run yeah. down to the next building because um, there's no gold left. And that's that that kind of sets up how like, yeah, we need a new system here. This doesn't work. And he does explain how the idea of like companies trumping uh, uh, nations. Jesus. Sorry, yeah, you can't use that word anymore. Trump, companies uh, sur- sur- supplanting. <laughs> Uh, nation states as like the lenders, the 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 base of authority. Like they started trusting the Hacklehavers because regardless of wars and regimes, their their accounts were always solid. So like that, the reputation loses. Reputation is so important in, yeah. <laughs> in business. <laughs> um, yeah, Drake Waterhouse. He was a Puritan leader who who fought against the king and in the Civil War and like was a friend of Cromwell. So he has some like street cred amongst the crazy Puritan sect in England. Yeah. yeah, so so throughout the broke cycle for the listeners, you learned so much about the history. Oh, I've answered so many Jeopardy questions from Baroque cycle. There was one about uh, what Russian czar came to Amsterdam or where, whatever incognito in, in, in the 1600s to learn the art of shipbuilding. Right. And I was like, oh my god, totally know that one. Actually, I forget now. Was it Peter? Yeah, so, Peter the Great. It was so, Peter. Yeah. So for our what? I think it was he's, a final Jeopardy question. He's too. great. The way Leibniz descri- describes him. Could have been him, a contender. When he says he goes into fits and his eyes start twitching. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you don't want to be around when that happens because he's like a seven-foot giant Russian monarch. And it's, it's terrifying. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Sorry about Karen. And there was another one about uh, who, who inoculated their people for smallpox. It was uh, Caroline, I think. Huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Remember Eliza killed that guy by, by oh, that couple by having a threesome with them when she had, knew she had smallpox? Wait, that happened? Yeah, that happens oh, in these yeah, books. This book would be such a good Game of Thrones miniseries. Yeah. The, like, the, 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 the husband was abusing the daughter. So he banged, she banged and both? And she knew that, and she knew she was starting to get, she was starting to exhibit the symptoms for smallpox. I like, I like her sausage condoms. Yeah. <laughs> Those that's, are real. That's, oh, that's real. I know. I, that's what I'm saying. It's like, like Game of Thrones. They're not. They're not <laughs> vegan exactly, but they're like natural. Condoms. They're not like, vegan. They're, they're, they're very guts. not vegan. <laughs> they're animal <laughs> stomachs. <laughs> they're the opposite of vegan. Isn't that what she uses to bang Bobby Shafto? She's when she, like, do, yeah, when she's on, trying me, to not oh, get yeah, pregnant. Like, I don't think it's in Paris somewhere. I don't think it really protects you I from think it was diseases, in a deli. but it can stop. It can work to like prevent birth. There's a layer. I, I just I'm saying I don't think it's like because they still sell them like you can buy lambskin. Well, which is better, that or a sock? I think they still make them for people without latex allergies. You yeah. can buy it like natural. That's, that's what I meant. Not yeah. vegan. <laughs> Wait, so you can buy bear skin condoms that's actually made out of bear, bear skin. skin? No, Probably it's not intestines. bear. Bears are, have a tough gut. Oh, okay, yeah. Bears eat bees <laughs> mixed in with the honey. You don't. Wanna, you don't want to have their stomach. They have bee- Battlestar condoms? Galactic. I'm saying when it, you watch a bear eat honey, a honey hive, they eat it with the comb and the bees and everything. They're just monsters that way. They're mountain monsters that eat everything. So there are no you bear know. condoms. Uh, I mean, you could try. That's a that's a cottage industry for Fetish, sure. You're yeah. gonna need to find some <laughs> specific people to supply it, but uh, yeah. it doesn't come up. But in yeah, that's cycle, the thing. So so I think it was it might have been Caroline or Sophie. It was Sophie in the in the, the, the Schloss house or whatever. Remember, she just gets stuck away in a house in the middle of nowhere, or like her husband shows up. What are you talking about? Like someone close to cycle. someone that's, close that's, to Eliza, yes. I forget. Man, it's so, it's under so the many umbrella. moving parts. I know, but uh, she gets uh, wait. Sophie was she's being them? the child is being he started. You know, he hadn't abused her yet, but he was starting to look at her and make comments like she, he was going to abuse this child. And but and him and his 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 oh, mistress, so Eliza smallpox banged them. Yeah, the man who was hit on the head as a boy. It was her friend who was married to one of those guys. Right. And so and she had her mistress. He had her he mis- was, his mistress was and was ro- banging her like right in front of him. So Eliza decides to have a threesome with them and give them both smallpox and they die and she survives. So she saves uh, Sophie and I think Char- Charlotta. Char- yeah, Charlotte, not Caroline. Right? That's a very Eliza. Charlotta. That's a very Eliza it's move to be like. Well, here are the tools at my disposal, and I think that's <laughs> Caroline's mom in the books, right? Uh, Sophie is Caroline's mom. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe quick, ugh, it's so complicated. Quick I know side there's note, so many for characters all, for too. all of our one <laughs> Zach listeners, we would love to hear <laughs> your favorite. Uh, Parts of Baroque oh, cycle. so let's do that. Yeah, let's do like, share, fa- subscribe. Let's do favorite Baroque cycle moment. Okay. Oh, I, I did it with the. Oh yeah, Bob. that's a good one. All right, so, so Johnny, yeah, so go. my two would probably be Bob. Fuck, there's so many good ones. Yeah, it'd be like favorite ones. top top three. Yeah. Okay. So top three would be Bob fighting in Ireland, yeah, Eliza so. having to ship the wood, and probably the phosphorus. Morty. Okay. Just in general, What's the phosphorus <laughs> with the elephants in India. Phosphorus happens so many. No, times. when they're up in, um, they're up north, north somewhere. Where, north like, of the they, wall. They, they're watching. Oh uh, shit, genres. Where, where, uh, where Eliza and Jack are like looking over the camp, and they go down. They in the very beginning of Fagabonds, the Battle of Vienna, Siege of Vienna. No, no, they're you, over you're talking the about camp? Uh, where where Newton and crew show up. Daniel, where show like up. They're, they're dealing with like the glowing pea. Oh, if somebody's wait. gathering the urine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking. It's the one because this is one of my favorite moments. I too. haven't, I haven't where, read them in a really where they ki- it's been they, like four they, or five they years. Ki- kidnap the guy who's selling his urine and Isaac Newton and, and Daniel and yeah. they interrogate him and he's like, I don't know where they take me to because they blindfold me and they say, All right, oh, next the wagon time, they build. Yeah, count the clicks. Yeah. Of, they that put part? a thing on the wagon. Those would probably be my top three. And they say count the clicks and then Newton works out the math of like when the guy tells him that they turn after how many clicks of the wheel and he works out, oh, this is how far you have to go before you turn. And then they find the place where they make the phosphorus. Yeah, and yeah. then they shoot, try to shoot the dog and they ignite the phosphorus. Yeah, it's a pretty cool scene. I remember. And then, uh, yeah, somebody... I remember. Somebody saves somebody. All uh, right. Quick, quick anatomy so. side note. It's very important to get rid of your phosphorus. When your kidneys start failing, your body starts uh, retaining phosphorus and then they, your phosphorus binds with your calcium 
and you, it just fucks you up. So to make sure I'm healthy, I, I should try to make phosphorus from my urine, and if it doesn't light, then I know I'm not healthy. Obvi. Okay, that's a good way to that's check, way. I guess. Yeah. Uh, Joe, uh, was that three? That was three. Joe, your top three? Uh, well, some of those for sure. <laughs> Some um, that leaves you one. Some, There's, but not all. Well, I know. I, I for some reason you're right. Like all the phosphorus stuff, I really like. I all don't know the phosphorus. Yeah, when he black cover it, coats himself in it in India and pretends so to be a glowing god. That, that, bat- that part was great. <laughs> also, exactly. ostrich feathers. Let's just throw an ostrich feather. Yeah, that was one of mine. The ostrich feathers. Yeah, exactly. But. And and even Maybe. even that, that that whole battle with elephants and just phosphorus flames. Yeah. It's so good. Oh, it's, you mean the oliphants when like Sam's a bitch? Yeah, in, uh, pretty in, much. And him and Gollum yeah. are like hiding out. But Jack does it right, and he has so much. Like he has time for that plan, and it it, it shows. What's like, also the scene? Uh, one of my favorite scenes where he eats the magic mushrooms in the woods. It's. it's that, like, I thought that was the phosphorus <laughs> one she's talking about. He eats oh, the magic yeah. mushrooms. That's one of mine. And that's he gets lost in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> he he, yeah. he wanders into a pagan ritual. <laughs> it's so and he random. Eats right. Some of there's too much of their mushrooms. It's too. such a weird. He takes trip. like two or three bowls, and that's when they realize like. Yeah. This guy's not one of us because no, none of us would eat that much. <laughs> yeah. Also, look so, at him. So that's the equivalent <laughs> right. of Sam and Frodo walking in on the elves in the beginning of, but worse. of Fellowship. Because then right? they start chasing him. They do that as they're leaving. The, as they're yeah. leaving Hobbiton. Yeah. The, they, they start, how does that end? I forget. Right? So he, he runs through to the woods. He, he breaks into a house and they yeah. burn the house down while he's in it. So he finds a mine shaft under the house, like a tunnel that connects. And, yeah, to and a he's tripping shaft. hard. The he's whole tripping time. hard on a <laughs> so mushroom stew while he's wandering through a mine shaft. Who knows that the pagans are And really they're, they, they're chasing him, I think, for a while. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's going to suck all the oxygen out. And then he finds some water, and he has to, like, swim under, under dark yeah. water, which is, like, instant death, usually. And he finds a glowing light, and he jumps up, like, half-naked, tripping balls. And, like... Yeah. And, he, and, and That's like, early in the series, too. And it's because the like cave... The was, and he thought he saw a monster, but the cave had fossil fossils and phosphorus, right? It was something weird, yeah. It that, happened like, to have both. There were just fossils sticking out of the wall, and he was tripping, and he thought a monster was attacking Eliza, and she was like, oh, that's cute. He tried to protect me. That's, that's, that's ki- when she started to be like, oh, he's a good that's guy. That's kind of a, a uh, an homage to, um, what's his name? Bobby uh, God, Sh- Shafto's uh, dragon attack. So, oh, what? yeah. Guadalcanal. <laughs> yeah. Cryptonomicon. Who's a, f- a lizard, sir. Oh, yeah. I have it. I Talk have about it. the lizard. Oh, no, I have gone to that it. part. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 probably I because that's just the reason why I like that scene or that sequence. I guess it's more. This is why it's epic because it's not a scene. That's that's a sequence, right? And the reason why I love that is because I think it's that's very early on in the series. That's either Quicksilver or this. I think it's the second book actually. But hmm. it really sets you up to think, oh man, I'm gonna get. I, I'm on the second book here. I'm gonna get six more books of this. Awesome. Yeah, it that was in. that was insane. That's the wh- how he describes it in the audiobook intro. He calls it the the swashbuckling. He he he'd yeah, be like, yeah, the yeah this one's more of a bodice ripper, yeah. which is like the intrigue yeah. stuff with Eliza. Yeah, and then it's all it, good. It's the the Jack stuff. So did you? That was three, right? No, that's know. two. Uh, okay, a third one would I? Get? Oh, so I don't know why I like this because it in some ways it doesn't seem that interesting, but. Uh, the scene, it, well, it's so there's the scene where, yeah, they're taking Jack to hang him at the end the of the hanging march. Yeah, the hanging march. And so the, the guy, or he, Jack gets this fancy ass coat and it's got expensive ass buttons on it and frills. Gold all over. Like him. the frills themselves could, you know, feed a peasant family for a year, right? And so he tells the, the guy, the executioner His hanging guy. suit, his, he it, calls it. Right, but the guy who's going to actually hang him. He, he promises t- it to He promises Jack him. Jack Catch. Oh, yeah, Jack Catch. He promises He tells Jack him, Catch. I'll give it to you at the end. And Jack Catch is like, oh, great. I'll make sure that your death is quick. And then the whole march. No, he says something like, your suit alone will get my family out of all the debt we're in. Yeah. Like, this he's, is a godsend. He's super psyched. Yeah. He's super psyched about this. And he's like, I'm going to help you out, Jack. I'll make Jack, sure you though. die instantly. I'll make sure you die instantly. Make sure those those, and those so, young boys tug on your feet. Exactly. And then so the whole march, Jack's right? just like giving away buttons and, and frills. He can't help himself. The imp of the perverse yeah, takes over. To all and these he's like, peasants. look at these poor bastards. I'm not just going to stare yeah. at them. They're looking at me in gold. And he pretty much winds up at the scaffold naked, right? Pretty much. Yeah, he even throws yeah. the waistcoat away because yeah. it's such fine linen. Yeah. Like, they can sell trade that yeah. for something. And then so Jack Catch says, 
fuck this guy because the whole time he's getting he's looking at him and he even goes like what are you doing and he yeah. keeps doing it yeah. yeah and and he still does it so he says oh i'm gonna make this guy suffer yeah. so he gives him a slow hanging but that gives the mob now who loves jack enough time to, to rush him to rush the the, the guards he just gave who them like, all that gold. Well, we're, we're not gonna start shooting these peasants because they'll tear us to shreds yeah, we can't there's a million and, of them and they take his body off and before the guards can get to his body, they they what what is what the crowd is, surf him they away? They crowd surf him and away. Like, yeah, well, kind of when we got to one place, they moved him to another. <laughs> so, like, we just couldn't so, get to. I him. feel like so, Jack and, crowd surfs a couple times. Oh yeah, so. yeah, but, but not never like half but dead. But and to escape because when they when at the very end, the guard the head guard goes to Isaac Newton and and Isaac's like, yes, I I I hear the hanging you know was quite quite an affair. So he's dead now, and they oh, go. I love he wants your to see his voice. brain, right? Oh, yeah. He's got to oh, be super yeah, squirrely, he, and you just did a really good. Yeah, yeah. He wants and he to goes, cut open he goes his brain. so take it. Yeah, deliver him to my lab. And the guy's like, "Well, we kind of can't." And, and Newton goes, "Oh, you dismembered him. Uh, like, I'll take the head at least." And the guards just like, "No, we we don't have the body." And it's like, "Well, how badly did you destroy it?" And the guards thinking, "Oh, this him. isn't good." Yeah, and so he tells him, "Well, the the mob kind of took him." And Newton's like, body. once he was dead, right? And the guard's like, yeah. well, yeah, we hung him. And, and Newton's like, did his neck break? And he goes, well, you know, we hung him. No, they say, he said, he showed up so much, had so much gold for catch. They even say something like, yeah. when he left the hanging yeah. place, he was dressed in so much gold, someone gave him money to pay the hangman. Yeah, because at first, they're kind of, you can tell, I think, their, I their think... vibe is almost along the lines of, he definitely got away, didn't he? And then they just realize... If he goes away, what's the difference? It's the same. As like, long as he's gone. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, so what Newton didn't get to cut his brain open? Like, that's so weird yeah. anyways. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes and chills with Leroy. <laughs> and then, no, well, for, yeah, yeah. And then he ends up that's hanging out. The story ends. Because Versailles lasted, like, another 50, 60 years after that, right? Uh, the French yeah. Revolution was until the eight, 1780s. Yeah. So, like... Jack yeah, was long dead by then, yeah. so he got to hang out in Versailles at its peak with Leroy, old old ass Leroy. Yeah, old ass Leroy. I love his oh, names yeah, for people: Ike, Leroy. Who's Ike? <laughs> Isaac Newton. He calls him old oh, Ike. He does call him old Ike. <laughs> what does he call? Oh, he just calls him Waterhouse. I don't know what he calls him. I love the moment. The yeah. okay. So my top three moments. Yeah, I'm gonna start off with this one. It might be my third, but I just thought of it. Is when uh, Teague Partry reveals himself to be Jack Shafto. Oh, wait, is that Teague Partry? No, it's Sean Partry. Sean Partry. Sorry. No, there's more. Oh, no, it's not. I think it's Sean Partry. Sean Partry. Partry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, the thing about Jack Shafto oh, is, is I am Jack yeah. Shafto. The reason he's not here is because <laughs> uh, he is here. I'm me. I'm yeah. him or whatever. And I'm it's Jack so good. Shafto. And in the, in the audio book, yeah. like, you know it's coming if you pay attention. But that won't work in the show. <laughs> yeah. It only works in the book. It would work in the show because he's aged. You haven't seen him. It jumps ahead 15 years from when uh, you would his buddy, recognize him. from what when his buddy about? shoots off Etienne's head when Devrage Rage Trajus Fanyan that was he a shoots cool the guy's moment. head and he heads to England with the Shex. Yeah. 15 years pass before Daniel shows you would up. recognize him in the so show. So Partry yeah that's what that's what a uh, plastic and you don't CGI know what he's been through for. he might be missing an eye by then you could do a lot with it to uh, liberty in a visual world uh, maybe I don't know you don't even find Not out his him. hair color until. That scene. Okay, wait. Where he mentions I mean, Sean Partridge. Wait, wait, wait. Sandy you told me this hair. years ago. You told me this like five years ago. Do you, do you know what color his hair is yet? And I said no. That's and how you, I knew how far along. And you said, do you want to know? And I said, no, I don't want you to spoil it. And I don't remember learning it ever. So what color it's is it? Because he hair? tells you sh- when they describe Sean Partridge, he describes like it sounds like Jack Shafto. What color is his hair? It's sandy colored. Oh, that's so it. it's like dirty blonde-ish. I, oh, guess. I thought it was something cool like Targaryen, dirty blonde, silver. brown. No, of course not. He's the king of the vagabonds. He has to be able to blend in with the people. That's true. He, that's he's good at carousing. Isaac's and got in, the Targaryen like... hair. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he no, totally does. But it's it's that scene where he turns into he turns into Jack Shafto and he tells him. Yeah. And he says something like, "He goes, oh, I, uh, Newton's uh, gob found it, and and Waterhouse is sm- smiling like he knew all along. Maybe Waterhouse is smarter than Newton all along, like you know, smarter than Newton after all. Like he's he genuinely reacts, but since he is a genius in his own way, he's like, "Gotcha." And Waterhouse is like, 
Ah, oh, I get it now. That makes sense. You fuck and what? And Newton's just like what? Like he can't Wait, even <laughs> imagine. Did Daniel know Jack Shafto? No, no. But he knew he was hunting for him, and uh, like you know what I mean. Just he knew some. There was a traitor. So you know what I mean? Yeah, he right. Was, he was a, a good, way better investigator yeah. than Newton was. Newton was like inconceivable because in a lot of ways, Waterhouse <laughs> is smarter than Newton. <laughs> he talks in the audio. <laughs> inconceivable. It's so that, Bring me the lamp. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like <laughs> those traitors. Yeah, he they think they know the calculus. Yeah, it's kind of like a combination it's of very like English Englishmen. Yeah. So I've been to a that, few that's of the colleges, but I want to go like on a Newton tour and just be yeah. everywhere that he's been. He's oh, that's like when we went to uh, Westminster Potter. Abbey, Westminster. And, and we were Westminster. we were walking through the Grave Hall or whatever. Oh yeah, it's called. the Grave Hall. And I looked, hall. I looked. I what do you? I don't. know. I'm sure it has a fancy English I know. name. It's the Abbey. But I looked the, down the and it said, it said "Here lies Sir Isaac Newton," and I just said, oh. "Yeah." And there's like Robert here. Hooks there He's too. Bones. Yeah, there's so many people. There. See, so that's also really cool. If you ever go to England. Baroque Cycle is a fantastic fucking book to read before oh, then. Oh, yeah. Because you'll be blown away by yeah, how if much... If you're ever going to go to London, how many that first. How many fire monument, the tower, Westminster... Like, there's so many spots that are either from the book or... St. Paul's. Yeah, you can draw connections to. You can just to. walk around. Tower or, Bridge. Or, yeah, you can, go to the, you can go to the colleges yeah. and, and see where the, yeah. the, 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 the buildings and the... Yeah. In the abodes that they're Yeah, describing. I was freaking out at points when we were in London because Remember I the recognized stakeout? them from the books. It was yeah, so cool. The, the stakeout yeah. on Tower Bridge. Yeah. That was amazing. It's awesome. It was so oh, yeah. We're even picturing what Tower Bridge would have looked like with when all the shops. it was the, built out like that, pre-regulation. Like, yeah. They yeah. just would build out well, over the river until when, something when, fell when off Jack's, and then you'd rebuild it. Didn't, didn't one of Jack's other brothers die when on the bottom of the bridge? Dick. Dick, yeah. There's oh, Dick, yeah. Bob, and Jack. When they were Dick, kids, Bob right? Bob, and Jack. Yeah, and, and Dick, when they were mudlarks. Dick, Dick drowned at yeah. the bottom of... Because they had the a dumb scheme of cutting anchors. <laughs> yeah, that's you right. You cut the anchor, and when the ship drifted downstream and landed on the Isle of Dog, it became international salvage laws, and you could take it. It's like, no, you idiots. The city guard's just going to come and kill the mudlarks that cut the cables. <laughs> they don't care about... They have no claim to laws. Like, they're living on a beach illegally. That river was mud. dirty. Yeah, the Thames. Oh, it's way so that's one of my second. Let me pick my <laughs> yeah. second favorite moment. Would be, but it was dirty then too. Is the is heist disturbing. the fucking? Because that all is set up for the heist yeah. in Bonanza out in Cadiz when Jack gets sucked underneath the ship for a second. Oh yeah, and his his boarding axes aren't taking, and he has that moment of panic and flashes back to when Dick drowned. And he's yeah. like, oh no, uh, this is like my one actual trauma fear I have. And and but they pull it out. They get up. They steal the ship. They sail it to Cairo. Yeah. Everything that happens from there. Like, so that's one of my favorite is the, yeah. the actual pirate heist at Cadiz. That's when uh, yeah. what's the the, so red, the redheaded pirate's name? Moza. No. Oh. Uh, oh, Van Hoke. Van Hoke. Van Hoke. Yeah, he seizes yeah. the ship, and that's when he, you see him first take over as captain because he's a practical captain. He just yeah. would never work as an officer. He's real competent. He was just yeah. like fuck these pirates. I won't work for them. And he's like, I'd rather scrape yeah. barnacles. That was a hell of a well. crew. Dapa, Yevgeny. The 13. Yevgeny. Yevgeny was great. Yeah, what, was Yevgeny. The, what was the line during the fucking Cairo shit show where he says, like, I, I'll meet you on the other side. And oh, they're I'm like, taking the long way. I'm taking, See, and yeah. they're, they're like, did he mean See, the... Johnny, you just like pulled that shit out of your ass. It's amazing. Did he, yeah. Did Ugh. he mean the ta- like the city or the world, the planet? Yeah. He meant... What, what is yeah. he referring to exactly? I think he meant Europe. No. It was unclear then, at the time. But then right. Yevgeny shows up later, like, with one eye. No, like one arm. Sp- one arm. Okay. Well, he yeah. loses his arm there. It gets blowed off with a musket. And then, it and gets then he attaches he places a, a spear to it, right? Well, at one point, he has a flail on it. Yeah. Like, a, like a chain oh, right. attached to a cannonball, uh, like, that shoots out. Yeah. Like, and then another time, he has a counterweight on it, so he can use throw his harpoons even farther. Yeah. He just puts a giant ball on it, so he can, like, swing his body. Yeah, uh, which is insane. I always just imagine him as like on and he has the a hook on long it. Long hair. When oh he saves God. Eliza from that <laughs> ship in the harbor, he yeah. has a hook on it. I think. Yeah, I, I think he had like a, a hook or a spear at one point. A harpoon. I think he had a couple attachments something. to be honest. Oh, he he tries to harpoon Isaac Newton, or he tries to so harpoon Peter, Peter the Great. Peter the Great. His whole goal was to in the bar, right, right. and it goes <laughs> in between like they, they Leibniz explain. and 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 Newton's heads, the they, two greatest heads of the time. It they, says or yeah. something like that. They explain. See, I don't remember the exact. Gainey's story at some point 
They say uh, when he's fighting the, in the Casbah in uh, Algiers. Rock the Casbah. Yeah, they go to the Casbah in, in Algiers as slaves. Like, the story covers everything. But uh, at Rus, yeah. r- uh, they chanting Rus, 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 or whatever, because he's Russian. And yeah. he fights the giant African man in combat. Oh, in the combat slave, the by slave twisting. Fight. The guy tries to twist his balls, and it doesn't work. You have to get, and Moses says, he's like, oh, he's raised in a secret society, trained as an assassin, and trained to not feel pain. Oh. And it's like, oh, that's why he's so badass. Because he was yeah. trained as a, uh, uh, what is he? A Muscovite or whatever? No. Whatever he is. Uh, a Raskolnik. Yeah, he's oh, a Raskol- yeah, Raskolnik. Raskolnik yeah. He's trained as an assassin to kill Peter the Great. Yeah. And he gets so close. But it's not his story. It's not about him. So Well, that was like at the he end of... doesn't work. Was yet. that at the end of... I forget which one, where Jack goes around the world. Is that Bonanza? No. Well, whichever one where he gets to the end and it Junto, turns Junto, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's Junto, and it turns out that it's the other guy's story, Frasia's story. He says that. Frasia's yeah, he just turns yeah. out. He, he realizes. Story. Yeah, Jack realizes. Oh shit! I was the secondary character in this story. It turns out it was actually the the whole actual thematic plot was yeah. was this guy's, and I was just kind of that crazy Kramer wild card making things happen. Has that ever happened done. in your real lives? I don't know. That's a good question. I, yeah, because Raja's whole right family, now. they take Jack in. They take in a stranger. Yeah. Their lives yeah, he's get part ruined. of their plot, it turns yeah. out. Yeah. Their lives get ruined. Yeah. One of them like plans revenge, plots revenge and follows The whole around. time. But part of that revenge is why his family succeeds. Deshex doesn't do it to be nice. He's yeah. just like, we want to keep an eye on them. So we made them the yeah. coffee suppliers for Versailles. So they're like wealthy yeah. noble people now. And like their yeah. lives get way better because of Jack in a weird yeah. way. Some of his brothers died, but well, the rest but of the family is way better yeah, off. Then later on. And then, of course, yeah, yeah it's all Vraja's story. Vraja's story is great. And there are moments where he's just like freaks out on Jack, kind of. Jack's like, all right, calm down, man. Right, because Jack Cause doesn't Jack know the whole story. Know. He's just a minor yeah. character. He's just a minor, which I love. That's one of my favorite things in literature where what you think is happening like that, it turns out, oh, no, it's, it's actually it's a, it's a different dynamic than you thought, mm. right? And that explains then why you have those moments that don't quite line up where you're, you're thinking maybe, wait, what's going on? And Stevenson does a really good job of It's hard to do. That, yeah, yeah, he does a really... I, Keeping I mean, it interesting while not being the focal point. Yeah, and that's something worth saying about his writing, too. I, I, I mean, just the, the breadth of it in terms of how much he covers in terms of not just, not just time and space, but the, the theme, too, and the action of it. I, I don't know how he does it. I mean, I would really like to read more uh, or listen more about his creative process of how he comes up with where he wants to get to. Because that's always a, a question that writers that I, I know have is, where, where do you start in terms of, do you have an idea of something that you want to say? And how specific is that idea in terms of the concrete ways to get there, Right. And that I think that varies by genre and by writer and lots of other factors. But with with him, I mean, because he's he's I, I think there are some core ideas or, or lessons maybe to his writing. But I, don't, I just don't know how he touches upon everything that he does and weaves it all together. I mean, you've got it with an epic like that, which is where, uh, you know, people like Tolkien and um McCaffrey, you know, succeeded and people like Martin have failed is, uh, I'm sorry, it's fresh. I just want to stab that wound a little. Um, well, let's say Martin succeeded books one through three. Right. I could concede that. Okay. I could concede that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, Fair is enough. that you ha- you really have to plan it out and you can tell that, yeah. that Stevenson has that mind to be like, this is where this is going. This is yeah. going to take me a lot of books, um, but I'm going to get there. You know, some other people who might have failed have been um, the Wheel of Time or whatever. Oh, Robert, Robert Jordan. Jordan. Robert Jordan. Yeah. You know, it's I kind mean, of a let down, that not, not that it. No, not but that, he didn't fail. But he didn't fail like Martin did, obviously. But here's the but. thing: when I'm reading Stevenson, even <laughs> even <laughs> when I just want to take a big old. But Steven even when Stevenson feels beauty. feels like, oh man, I'm in book six of this epic series, and why are we talking about this fabric right now? I still have confidence. Whereas Wheel of Time, right. there's so many moments where I'm just thinking, I, I don't give a fuck right now. Well, I, 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 I read the first three books of Wheel of Time, 
I ruined Johnny's first copy. It took me four years to admit that to him. I read the first 11 and I, books and I didn't and I finish hated, the series. And I, yeah. And I, the, from the beginning, I was just like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> That's fair. I, uh, yeah. I, I, I feel bad. I feel bad. Is, I no, you should. For the quality of Wheel of Time's not as good as no, Baroque Cycle no. as far as I'm concerned. I would have to agree. Yeah, yeah I um, feel like that's that's like uh, generational. It's, it's, I mean, they're it's, very different. That's They are very different. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff about that's Wheel of Time. It's very, but, I mean, every fantasy story starts with, little boy doesn't know where his yeah, parents are, then I discover I have powers. But yeah. Fucking Trollocks. Uh, the Trollocks. Trollocks? I call them Trollocks because it sounds Anyways. like Trolls. Uh, Those Steven, guys are creepy. Stevenson for his quality of writing is fairly prolific. I've read a lot of his books or listened like Snow Crash. He's a good writer. First novel Snow Crash. Great. Wait, that, great. Snow Crash was his first. I believe so. I think that was his first He's, published novel. But even from huh. a technical standpoint, Hero. his his level of detail in terms of how is that been how he describes things. He he's. His technical skill is pretty because I mean, there's you take George R. R. Martin for example. I mean, again, let's just say books one through three, right? He is pretty good, and he he has some really good dialogue at points and some really good descriptions at points. But Stevenson is just, uh, in some ways, he's more consistent. I feel like, yeah, Cause, well, because he, uh, he's, he's, he's got a dope ass beard. But I'm just saying, he for, does have the dope ass. Snow beard. Crash, shout is, out uh, Stevenson. S- Snow Crash, he's described Adam. as cyberpunk like satire, a cyberpunk parody. It's oh, like yeah, over Snow the top was, campy Snow Crash cyber was 92, punk. Cryptonomicon 99. And then he came out yeah. with Cryptonomicon after that, which is Cryptonomicon like, couldn't have been written in 92. It's so intense. <laughs> it's it's amazing. It bridges like world that's, it jumps from World that's War II. So much II. more recent than I thought that it was. Cryptonomicon? Yeah, it, jump, it jumps from World War II to books. the yeah. 90s tech boom to the, this the, the, the idea actually, of an offshore data haven, which actually, is a thing now. That's what Bitcoin I actually is, think, basically. Yeah, that's true. He was way ahead of his time with even Snow Crash. He had he had the uh, the yeah. net or whatever. I thought Cryptonomicon was. Reality, I thought Cryptonomicon thing. was too much crammed into one book. Like Cryptonomicon read to me almost as if you took the Baroque cycle and tried to make it not the, the whole Baroque cycle, but if you had presented one of the volumes. Did you read as all of Cryptonomicon? Book. Yeah. What's the oh man! Name? It was inc- oh yeah, bitch? you did finish it. What the redheaded chick? What's her name? Uh, in Cryptonomicon? Yeah, I don't. The I don't Swede, know. the Swedish chick, Amy Shafto. Amy Shafto. Yeah. Oh, she was America Shafto. America Shafto. So good. That's such a Neil Stevenson name, <laughs> America Shafto. Well, his father, her father, was named uh, Douglas MacArthur Shafto yeah. because Bobby Shafto was so uh, like you know impressed with Douglas MacArthur. That he gave that full name as his kid. He never actually name. met Douglas MacArthur, did he? No, he did. Are we sure of this? I'm pretty sure. I'm he did. pretty sure at you least half of his meeting, morphine dreams. I'm pretty sure at least half of them were morphine dreams. But this is what I. This is why I like Stevenson because I mm. really don't. I don't know. If it I'm doesn't just, matter. The story is good. Either also, way. that's true. As the story so, works, no, because there's times where not. Douglas MacArthur shows up and so does the giant lizard. Or he turns into no, a No, he lizard. definitely met him in the... Because I don't... When he's I in the kimono far, shooting at yeah. the plane, that happened. Well, no, but when he's recovering... Yeah. Because, like, oh, I got a job for it. Yeah, there are times the, they're just driving in a truck. No, the, yeah, the interview, remember the interview? <laughs> like, he definitely met... No, that was R- Ronald Reagan. That was wasn't so it? good. Wasn't that Ronald was, Reagan? What do you do? What, what do you find yourself? If you, a motherfucker with a sword. If a, if a man with a sword comes after Douglas you, you shoot him wait, first. Wasn't it, wasn't it Ronald was, Reagan? Yeah, it was Reagan. That was the advice he gives me. He goes, if a man with a sword, you shoot the man with the sword first. He goes, oh, very smart. Because he's an officer. He goes, no, because he has a fucking sword. You ever have a guy with a sword come at you first? You kill that motherfucker first. And he's like, oh, okay, this, is, this interview is not going to work. And he's like, did I tell you about the giant lizard? And they're like, all right, this soldier's <laughs> addled. Like, we can't use him. And they try to not send him into combat over it. And he, like, re-enlists, right? And he goes back in, yeah. He gets he caught, like, over. re-enlisting, and they're like, mm, you're what we need for this special unit. Or he whatever. does a lot of crossing oh, wait, army so he borders. Captain America's? He, yeah, he was that, the original. that far. He was the original. Well, Captain America's been around forever. He's pretty good. He's the original, like, compared to the MCU version. I, you, should try, re- you should try reading that whole thing, Spoiler. though, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> because the whole thing yeah, with it's so good. The whole thing with fucking I know, I uh, Godo Dango's Godo fucking Dango. shaft system. It's, that's it's, more of that meticulous, brutal oh my, world building that, science. That's something where, where I read from, a, and as a writer, I read that and I just think to myself, "Holy shit! If I could do half as good as this, I would be happy." Because how he is able to even conceptualize that, let alone explain it in a way that makes sense to somebody as stupid as me. 
it, it's incredible how he explains this right. shaft mine airflow water escape. flooding escape system. It's so complex. But, go to but you read it and you say, "Yeah, that all makes sense with air pressure and go to collapsing the, chambers." Uh, he's and the, yeah, he's it's the, so cool. He's the Jack Shafto of that period, and he even says he's like, "There's progressive chambers because we have to go slowly because of the pressure." Like, it's crazy. He accounts for all that, so it, it's yeah. that part is real. You really that could really happen to two humans, and they could survive it if he knew where the tunnels were and could swim yeah. in the dark. Terrifying. He was in the, they were in the dark that whole time, and they like wait for a couple of minutes, and they're like, all right, we're running out of air, and that guy's not coming, so I think... Yeah, there's gone. one guy who they're just they're like, like oh, we've been here five minutes. Window. Yeah, they're like, we've yeah. been here five minutes, and it took us like seven well, minutes to I think to three swim of here. them actually there's get no out. Way. Oh, wait, I don't want to spoil it. I'm sorry. No, whatever. <laughs> this we're, is for the listeners. obviously, yeah, these... Uh, but whoever, the listener. whoever's clicking on this link has read the book and wants to hear us. I hope it's him. I hope or, it's, or if, I hope or it's if, Mr. Stevenson. Or if we you, would love to help you adapt it to yeah, a, if a you have, series, if obviously. You, if you have listened this long and you haven't read the books, you should probably pop a, a third mushroom. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but if you have been listening this long, chances are you're one of someone we know or you're Neil Stevenson himself. If Neil Stevenson would like to come on the podcast, I, I think we'll we can come make room to you, for him. Man. No, I, I got to check the schedule, and you know we'll we'll, we'll probably make, make room for him. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see what we can We're, do. I'm a big fan. I would I yeah. would try my best to to, to sway. Yeah, and, and Mr. Stevenson, we would love to read your other books. We we'd love to start a, a new a new Anna segment Finn's of the great. podcast. Say like thunk tomes or tome tank. Ooh, that's actually like, not bad. Where, where I like, it's like both a book club for the thunk for the thunk. What time are we at? We're over an hour. Oh, we got to stop. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like three thirty a.m. Is it really? Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, it's and uh, we're at an hour seventeen. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. We love uh, you. We love you. We love Neil Stevenson and his work. Sorry. Wait, how am I going to hang up on creepy. you? Creepy. Yeah, I know, right? This is why we're going to just keep going for three more hours. <laughs> but I don't end it now. <laughs> Joe but just, anybody Joe else? Turned off his microphone. He's he's out. But that's the that's the thunk tank oh, mic drop. So no. Okay, so Joe gets no last thoughts. All right, I have to finish, and then he gets, and then he gets to turn it back on. Kara, last thoughts. <laughs> last thoughts. Game of Thrones season eight sucked. All right, that's your last thought. That's how you get remembered. Um, <laughs> great series. Big fan of his work. Uh, I know he has, he had a time travel book. I think come out recently. I haven't gotten to read yet. I'm gonna get to it. Great fan. Check out Baroque Cycle audiobook, written read book. If you like swashbuckling. Um, you know, muskets and sword fighting, intrigue kind of, you know, total lack of regulations of anywhere in life. No, you turned tickling. your shit off, okay? Prostate tickling. There is prostate tickling in it. There's horse stealing. There's ostrich murdering. There's pirating. There's piracy. There's uh, uh, inter- illegal trading with the Japanese. There's I can just list things forever. They cover so much for a 1600 world, but now I have to hang up and... All right. Later, guys. Thanks for listening. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the Funk Tank Podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, If you want to help us out, please consider leaving a rating or a review wherever you listen to podcasts and uh, share it with people you think might like it. And if you really want to support us, you can go over to patreon.com slash Thunk Tank Podcast. We have links to this in, in the episode description and other places. And for as little as $1 an episode, you can help us keep the lights on. And you also get access to a very special Drunk Tank uh, feed of episodes. So every few episodes, we'll have a few more beers and record an extra 20 to 30 minutes of extra thunky, silly uh, whateverness. So there's a separate RSS link you can get from there. And if you put that into a podcast player, you'll get your own separate feed of only the Drunk Tanks. I think we have about six or seven of them out already and more to come. Thanks for listening, and stay funky.